Hi, it's Mr. T here. Um, in this video, I've got a quiz of 30 questions about atomic structure and bonding for beginning chemistry. This is aimed at level 2 NCAA achievement standard 91164, but anyone can use this for a revision. Okay, so what you're looking to do is get as many of these as right as you can and keep going, keep repeating until you're quite quick and proficient with your answers. Okay, here's question one. How many valence electrons are there in this molecule? Are there eight, 10, 12, or 16? If you put 12 down, that's great because that's the correct answer. Question number two. How many valence electrons are there in this molecule? CH2, F2. Are there 8, 12, 16, or 20? If you put 20 down, you had the correct answer. Keep going. Right, question 3. How many electron density regions are there around the central oxygen atom? Is there 1, 2, 3, or 4? If you put 4 down, you're correct. Let's go on to question 4. What are the approximate bond angles in this molecule here on the left? Carbon trichloride hydrogen. Are they 90 degrees, 109 degrees, 120 degrees, or 180 degrees? If you put 109 degrees, you are right. Question 5. Is this molecule polar or non-polar? This molecule is polar. Question number 6. Is this molecule polar or nonpolar? This molecule is nonpolar. Question seven Is this molecule symmetric or asymmetric? Symmetric or asymmetric? This molecule is symmetric. Question 8. What is the name of the shape of this molecule? So this molecule here on the left, is it trigonal planar, bent, trigonal pyramid, or tetrahedral? The name of the shape of this molecule. If you put tetrahedral, you're correct. Well done. 9. What is the name of the shape of this molecule? Water here on the left hand side. Is it trigonal planar, bent, trigonal pyramidal, or tetrahedral? If this time you put bent, you're correct. Question 10. What type of substance is the following? The carbon solid here, that's either going to be diamond or graphite. Is it extended covalent, molecular, metallic, or ionic? So that's extended covalent, molecular, metallic, or ionic. If you put down extended covalent, you are right. What is the type of substance is the following? So zinc solid here. Is it extended covalent, molecular, metallic, or ionic? This is a metal, so it's a metallic solid. 
What type of bonds does the following solid have between its particles? Question 12. So this is methane solid. What type of bonds between its particles? Are they covalent bonds, intermolecular bonds, metallic bonds, or ionic bonds? Well done if you got the correct answer of intermolecular bonds. What type of bonds does the following solid have? This is calcium fluoride. Does it have covalent, intermolecular, metallic, or ionic? This has ionic bonds. This is an ionic substance. What type of particles make up the following solid? This is silicon dioxide. Does it have atoms, molecules, atoms and electrons, or ions? This is an extended covalent solid and it is made up of silicon and oxygen atoms. What type of particles make up the following solid? This is aluminium. Is it made up of atoms, molecules, atoms and electrons or ions. This is a metal, so it is made up of atoms and delocalized electrons. If a solid has the following properties, what type of solid is it? If it's insoluble in water, has a high melting point and is malleable. Is it extended covalent, molecular, metallic, or ionic. This is a metallic solid. If a solid has the following properties, what type of solid is it? So if it is soluble in water, has a high melting point and conducts electricity when molten, is it extended covalent, molecular, metallic, or ionic. This is an ionic solid. If a solid has the following properties, what type of solid is it? Brittle, very high melting point, conducts electricity. It's a bit tricky this one. So, is it an extended covalent, a molecular, a metallic, or an ionic? So it's brittle, very high melting point, and conducts electricity. This is extended covalent. It is actually a special type of extended covalent called graphite, whereas it is an exception to most extended covalent solids in that it conducts electricity. If a solid, solid has the following properties, what type of solid is it? Soft, low melting point, insoluble in polar solvent. Is it extended covalent, molecular, metallic or ionic? This is a molecular solid. Why can a solution of sodium chloride, this is question 20, why can a solution of sodium chloride in ACL conduct electricity? Is it because it has free moving protons? It has valence electrons that are free to move? The sodium and chloride atoms can conduct electricity or its ions are free to move? So a, sol a solution of um, ionic solid solution will have its ions free to move. Question 21. What best explains why iron has a high melting point? Is it it has non-directional metallic bonds? A lot of energy is needed to break the strong metallic bonds. It is hard or a large force is needed to break the strong metallic bonds.
a lot of energy is needed to break the strong metallic bonds. That's why it has a high melting point. Why are diamonds, carbon solid, very hard? Is it because only a small force is needed to break the bonds? A large force is needed to break the strong covalent bonds. The intermolecular attractions in the molecules are very weak, or a large amount of energy is needed to break the strong covalent bonds. It is very hard because a large force is needed to break the strong covalent bonds. Question 23. What are the correct labels for X and Y in this diagram? Are they products and reactants? Reactants and products, activation energy and time, or time and activation energy. The missing labels here are X reactants and Y products. Question 24. What best describes the reaction below? And this is a reaction where we have a fire. So there's a fire burning. Is it? exothermic or endothermic? This is an exothermic reaction because it is releasing heat. What best describes the reaction below? So this is a reaction of water liquid turning into water gas. So we've got a liquid water turning into gas water. Is it endothermic or exothermic? This here is endothermic because bond breaking, and we're breaking the bond between the water molecule, but water molecules is endothermic. Question 26. How is the equation correctly rearranged? to find the um, delta RH or the change in enthalpy for the reaction. So we have this expression on the left. How do we rearrange it to make delta RH the subject? Which one of these on the right is the correct rearrangement? If you guessed that the last one was the correct arrangement, then you were correct. How many moles of ethane, sorry, how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced when 445 kilojoules of energy is released from this reaction below? So if 445 kilojoules of energy is released, how many moles of carbon dioxide are produced? Is it half a mole, one mole, two moles or four moles. The answer is one mole. Two moles of oxygen was reacted in the reaction below. What is its mass? Two moles of O2 was reacted, what is its mass? Is it 16 grams, 24 grams, 32 grams, or 64 grams? The answer here is 64 grams because two moles of oxygen or two moles of 32 was reacted. Question 29. How much energy is needed to break the bonds in the equation below? Here is the equation below and here is the structure of the three molecules. How much energy is needed to break the bonds? Is it 292 kilojoules per mole, 436 kilojoules per mole, 582 kilojoules per mole or 934 kilojoules per mole. And the correct answer is 934. 
because there is one mole of hydrogen hydrogen bond and one mole of oxygen double bond to oxygen bond broken. The last question, question 30. What is the correct equation to calculate the, the energy that is released in the reaction below? So here's a reaction below, the same one as before. What is the correct equation to calculate the energy? Is it delta RH equals 934 minus 934? Delta RH equals 934 minus 1018? Delta RH equals 934 minus 682, or Delta RH equals 1018 minus 934. So there wasn't a lot of time in that last question, so well done if you got it correct. The answer is the bonds broken, which we worked out in the previous slide, and minus the bonds formed, which was 1118. Okay, that's the end of this set of questions. This is the B set of questions. Remember, you're looking to get 27 to 30 right if you're looking at an A plus or 23 to 26 to show that you're really on top of things. Hope this has been helpful. Look out for my other videos with questions on important topics in chemistry. See you later.